Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and today we are in Psalm 51, resuming our study in verse number 6. So get your Bible, open it up to Psalm 51. Study all of God's Word with me at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, and that's found at the Bible versebyverse.com. Just choose, click, and listen from four complete series. This is the fifth with the New Testament already done. Choose from any of those five series. Click and listen. Bring your Bible because that's all you need and a hunger for God's Word at the Bible versebyverse.com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 51, verse 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me know wisdom. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. It's talking about sincerity. God looks at our heart. That's what he desires, a good heart, a heart for him. None of us are perfect. But God wants us to have a heart after him. Sincerity is the thing that God desires. Hypocrisy is something that is evil, meaning to pretend to want what is right pretending maybe to do what is right and then not doing it and not even caring because your heart's not in it. That's a great evil to God. You can impress people who can be easily fooled, but what good does that do you on Judgment Day? And you and I may not always do what is right, But God wants us to at least have a heart after him. And when we sin, confess it and then turn back to him. If we want wisdom, then God will give it to us. And all that we must do is ask for it and be sincere. If you ask for wisdom, God will find ways of putting it into your mind. God will Find ways of putting it into your soul. As you learn the word of God, he will infuse your soul with wisdom. And part of the way he gives us wisdom is by showing us the foolishness of our mistakes and showing us also the mistakes of others. That's not wise. And we'll see the contrast, you see. Seven. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Hyssop is a leafy bush, and the Israelites used it like a paintbrush to apply the Passover lamb's blood to their doors down in Egypt. That blood saved their firstborn from death. Hyssop here, then, is a figure of speech, and it refers to blood, specifically the blood that saves, the blood of Jesus Christ. So David is saying, purge me with the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us on the cross and cleanses us from the evil that we have done makes us white and pure for before God. That's what's needed. It's the only thing that saves us. And we get it by repenting and receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Verse 8, Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. David is hurting because of his sin. And it feels as if all his bones are broken. When we as Christians sin, it should make us sick, should be something that we absolutely hate because it offends God, 
and God deserves better. That's the kind of heart for God that a true Christian has. The last thing in the world they want to do is hurt God. That's why they despise their sin and it feels so terrible after committing it. God deserves better. So sin should make us feel terrible until we confess it. Like a broken bone causes physical pain, sin causes spiritual pain to a Christian. If it doesn't cause spiritual pain to you and make you feel terrible, you are not saved. It's that simple. You are playing some kind of a Christian game, but you are not saved. In the life of a Christian, truly saved person, sin causes spiritual pain. And that's good because it reveals that there's something wrong. It reveals that we need to correct something somewhere. That pain is, is for a purpose. Verse 9, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. The blood of Jesus Christ will not remove the temporary consequences of our sin, but the blood of Jesus Christ does remove the guilt of our sin and the dirty stain that sin leaves behind. Feels good to get rid of that stain. Feels good knowing that not only is sin and guilt removed, but that the stain that sin has left behind is also removed from our souls through the forgiveness that is found through Jesus Christ. 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. In other words, fill me with clean thoughts, God. Get rid of my sin, forgive my sin, cleanse my soul, whitewash me, and then fill me up with good thoughts, clean thoughts, good desires. And putting the Word of God in you is the best way for God to accomplish that. It's not going to happen by magic, you know. It's not even going to happen by simply saying a prayer. You say that prayer, God, fill me with clean thoughts. Fill me with good intentions. And he'll lead you to the word of God. Said, so start reading it, boy. Because that's how it comes to pass. And we know there are many things in the world that come from many different directions. And they, they all have something in common. They want to pump dirty thoughts and bad desires into people's minds. So we need the Word of God to drive that garbage out of our mind. It's the only thing that will do it. 11. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. David sinned, and he knows that he deserves to be cast away from God. So he prays, God, don't cast me away. And you can be assured of this. God will not cast anyone aside if they truly want to be like, be with him like David did. God will not banish anyone to hell if they want to spend eternity with him. David didn't go to hell, even though his sins deserved hell. David didn't go to hell because after he sinned, he always returned to God. He always confessed those sins. David always got back on track with God, proving that his faith was genuine. And so he didn't go to hell because he didn't want to go to hell. He wanted to be with God because he loved God. You love God. You want to be with God. God's not going to send you to hell. Twelve. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Sin leads to sadness. And it should lead to sadness. David said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Where does joy go? Right down the drain when he sinned. The first thing that a depressed Christian should do is examine their conscience to see if there's any sins that they have not repented of or have not confessed. If, if when you examine your, if you're depressed, you're a Christian, you are depressed, you need to examine your conscience carefully with God's help and the help of the Word of God and ask God to show you if there is anything that you are doing that He wants you to stop doing because it's wrong 
or if there's anything that he wants you to start doing because it's right and you're not doing that because that covers both types of sin. Sins of omission, sins of commission. That's a real good place to start because until you take care of that, until you confess and repent of all sins in your life, you're not going to be feeling good. And if you nurse that and you don't confess, the longer it goes on, the more depressed you're going to be. You don't need a psychologist. You need to start by asking God to show you what's going on. Not all sadness is brought on by sin. I get that. But a lot of it is. And we must, as Christians, see if we have any attitude sin, too, like sinful pride. Oh, these are sneaky sins. Some sins are easy. Oh, yeah, I shouldn't do that. Yeah. And then you have the other ones that sneak in the back door of your soul. Pride. It's a sin. Envy. Do you want what somebody else has? That's sin. Boy, that causes a lot of depression. People nurse feelings of envy. That's living in sin. And they'll steal your joy in a heartbeat. So check your conscience for those things. Check your conscience for unforgiveness too or for hatred because attitude sins are very sneaky and slick and they can slide in and you don't even realize that you have them. And they are joy killers. 13. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. I like that. David says, God, if you forgive me, if you forgive me and you restore me to you, I'm going to tell others what you did for me. And then others will also experience your forgiveness. And they will have their joy returned too because I'm going to tell them how you did it for me. See, it's only natural for one who has been forgiven by God to want to see others forgiven as well. And God expects that, you know. 14. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. And my tongue shall sing aloud for thy righteousness blood guiltiness is physical death. David knows the penalty for willful sin is death. And he is guilty of willful sin. No wonder he was feeling horrible and scared to death. David deserves death and he knows he deserves death. God says the soul that sins will die. And you know what? There was no sacrifice. There was no offering for willful sin in the Old Testament. All those offerings in the book of Leviticus, they are all for sins that were committed unintentionally. So David is asking God not to sentence him to death. And he knew that God was the only one who could call off his death sentence. God is the eternal judge, and therefore only God can grant us an eternal pardon. And that's what David is asking God to do. I'll stop there. Study all of God's Word with me at the Scripture Verse by Verse website found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series going on five at thebibleversebyverse.com. Now, if you want to be a part of Scripture Verse by Verse, I've been teaching the Word of God for 37 years, verse by verse. It's all archived. If you'd like to be a part of this ministry, I have never watered down the Word of God, not one single solitary verse. You can be a part of this ministry by praying for me and God's Word, and I appreciate that more than what I can say. Also, when you take a break from studying with me at thebibleversebyverse.com, if you could go to the front page and click the Donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. That also makes you a part of this ministry. Until next time, so long, everyone.